And we've got a man who is multi-talented. Not only is he a legendary director and producer and writer, he's also a funny comedian. Stuart Lee, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Nice to talk to you today. Now, I suppose we, we ought to start at the beginning and the thing that you're most famous for of late, which is your Jerry Springer, the opera. Yeah. Right, let's get your take on it first. Why are so many people offended by it? Uh, well, first of all, uh, given that people are offended by it, uh, can I point out it was the composer Richard Thomas's idea? And, um, <laughs> and I just helped with the words and directed it. Um, but I think, well, I, th I, think this, the, I think the main reason why people are offended by it is because um, it's a sort of open-ended thing and, and it leaves you to make your own mind up about stuff. And, and lots of kind of art does that. And I think the people that are offended by it are those kind of Christians on the extreme right who... Um, who want certain answers for things, you know, and there's not much overlap. But also, I mean, there was a lot of stuff up ahead of it. I mean, the papers were saying it had 6,000 swear words, and we, we went through and did a check on it, and um, we counted 174. Um, but I would like to see an opera with 6,000 swear words. I think that would be quite good. Do you know what really upset me about it? And, and the main thing was the fact that half the people that were protesting, are, uh, I think it was about April, wasn't it? Or May in the summer? Uh, January, yeah. Yeah, it was like, I know it was a while back. And I just remember seeing all these news articles where all these stupid people were stood outside the BBC who hadn't even seen it. Yeah, now, I mean, the, the, I, I, don't, I don't know. The only, I haven't met anyone who's seen it who hates it, apart from people who, when I talk to them, I can't make head or tail of what they're saying anyway. I mean, Christian Voice, who led the protests, their last press release was about how Hurricane Katrina was God's punishment on New, on, um, New Orleans for being a sinful city. Mm. So it's quite difficult to engage with those people. The funny thing about that protest outside the BBC was they burnt their licence fees, but they're mainly paid by direct debit now. So. <laughs> 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 well, I saw the show um, twice, actually, uh, when it was uh, in the West End, um, and it's going to tour now. And, and we should say, it, it is Jerry Springer. I mean, anything with that name in it is going to be controversial and outrageous. Um, yeah, well, that, that's the idea, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, the, well, Rich, wanted, Rich said that one night he, he was watching the telly, and he'd been writing opera stuff for a while, and he said he looked at all these people and they were all fat and they were all shouting at each other and you couldn't understand much of what they were saying and he realised that that was the same as opera but um, <laughs> I think the, 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 the breakthrough moment was really realising that opera's about high passions and confrontation and um, and you know high drama and big emotions and American talk shows are about that as well and then in the second half we, we ran the same story again using the bible characters and if you look at the bible a lot of it's about those kind of issues as well you know people uh, Satan being kicked out of heaven by God and Adam and Eve fighting and all that kind of thing. So it didn't seem to me that apart from the colourful language, we, we weren't really doing anything that wasn't already there, you know. But, I mean, it's been a nightmare. It's been, it's been funny in a way, but it's uh, getting a bit grinding. I mean, it's been... Mm. Sainsbury's and Woolworths have pulled it from sale. And I email Sainsbury's every day and, and they, no one will give me a straight answer as to what exactly happened. Do you know what I think it is, Stuart? These days, and I've been uh, wrapped by the government for my programme on air, I say things and I try and say it as it is and I give my opinion, and now you just cannot have an opinion full stop. Whether it's left, right, middle ground, anything, you can't have an opinion because there's so many people out there waiting for you to say something. I mean, the stuff I've been fined over, you would have no idea, let alone something like this, which brings religion into it. And I think anything that brings religion in is always going to court controversy. But it yeah, just well, amazes me that, that, that people like Sainsbury's won't stand up and go, you know what, this is a DVD, we're in business to make money, people want to buy this, you know what, don't buy it. Well, the weird thing about Sainsbury's is that part of their kind of PR campaign is that they fund, you know, a wing at the Tate and an art gallery in Norwich and whatever. So it seems strange that they would then uh, back off something that's that's won all these, you know, Olivier Awards and whatever. I mean, it, it, and you kind of realise it is about business at the end of the day. And I think they were um, they were scared of uh, of protests. They don't really have my sympathy. But a lot of the, the smaller theatres that dropped out of having the show do have my sympathy, and also the cancer charity that withdrew our. Um, we did a benefit night for a Scottish Cancer Hospice charity mm. in January and um, Christian Voice said they'd pick it the hospices if they accepted the money. So they turned it down and to be honest they have my sympathy because the last thing people dying of cancer want is a load of people outside picketing a building, you know. Do you know what I think? Organize, do you know what I think? Organizations that, that behave in that manner, I think, are disgusting. Anybody that can't put an eloquent argument together in an email or in a letter, um, I have no time for. And what they did over the January broadcast of Jerry Springer the Opera, I think, is totally outrageous. If you cannot have free speech in this country, I think we're all doomed. And that's what these people are after. They don't want the truth. They don't want opinion, and they don't want art, and they don't want entertainment. I don't know what they do want. Well, uh, the funny thing for us is that when it started, I mean. 
we used to do it in a 40-seater room at Battersea Art Centre with six people and two chairs and uh, some wigs that I bought from a joke shop. And right. it was just another <laughs> little fringe show. And we now we, we suddenly find that we, we've become uh, caught up in a, in a political issue, you know, and um, it wasn't really wasn't really the, the, the part of the thing at all, you know, and, and yet suddenly you find that you, you, you have to have answers for these things. It does make you think about stuff. It's quite interesting. The thing I loved about it, though, was the fact that the BBC stuck up for you and they did broadcast yeah, because... They were good, weren't they? I mean, they were all right about yeah. that. They, um, they, they did... They, there were three BBC execs that were advised to go into hiding with police protection, which is pretty serious, you know. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, I, 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 felt, I felt that um, as a licence fee payer, I was delighted. Well, absolutely, because I thought there was a point in all of the fast where I thought they were going to go, you know what, actually, it's not worth the hassle for some TV show. But it, yeah. to me, it just added fuel to your fire and it just gave you the kind of publicity that you can't possibly buy. Yeah, although people keep saying, you know, you must be delighted, all publicity is good publicity, but it isn't when we can't sell the thing in shops and we lost a third of the dates on the tour. And we are touring it next year from January till June, but um, none of the, all the creatives have waived their royalties and we've had to cut our, our costs on the budget a bit. Um, so there did actually come a point where you'd think it would um, help but in the end it was counterproductive and also what what's happened is that it gets written about in two ways now it gets written about by its opponents as if it's a blasphemous load of rubbish full of swearing and it gets written about by its supporters in broadsheet newspapers as this very important thing that's the greatest piece of theatre for 35 years and deals with all these ethical issues and both those things sound rather unattractive and the truth is it's a mixture of the two I mean it's, it is a um, stupid mm. mad show that does deal with quite serious things so it's, it's weird you kind of it's it's got to a point where it's very difficult to see the wood from the trees for it, you know. The thing I, I first thought when I saw it was to the, the incredible talent that you had in the show. I mean, you had such beautiful, clever opera singers singing the most vile, outrageous and controversial words. And that I'd never seen in theatre before. And I think that's why it was so funny. Yeah, well, it was, it was you know, we were lucky that people did it because, um, you know, uh, we, we did need um, absolutely top singers. And uh, a lot of people were worried about how it would impact on their careers, you know, to get involved in it. And then, of course, what happened was that people in the world of opera embraced it and started to say that it had done this amazing thing, which was to make opera uh, accessible. Rich has got a little joke about that. He always says that we managed to bring opera to a wider audience so that everyone could realise they didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never understood opera, because opera's where somebody gets stabbed and instead of bleeding, they sing. Yeah, well, I know. Well, that's the funny thing about why it works as a talk show, because when you watch an opera, you think, why are these people going on about these things? Why don't they shut up? Whereas when you watch an American <laughs> talk show, you know that everyone's raising better for being there. Yeah. It used to go on and on and on about things. So it's actually the ideal format for an opera. I'm surprised that you know Mozart and Verdi didn't think of it. I'm sorry that some of the shops have pulled it because I think, again, I mean, I'm all for freedom of speech. I, I get wrapped, as I keep saying, on this show, they keep telling me not to say stuff and eventually you end up with nothing. And that's what I fear in this country. There's been an example recently of a radio DJ who's been taken off the air. Um, he's taken himself off the air because he's just got fine and fine and fine to the point where he can't say anything and there was 10 people editing his program as he went out live well yeah I mean we, 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 we live in weird times you know I mean I, I, I sort of I also worry about getting um, caught up in when people sort of start going on about political correctness gone mad I mean I, I kind of I have uh, sympathy for a lot of those issues and I, and I, and I kind of feel that um, our show ironically you know it was really politically correct it was it was about uh, not judging people and we had a vast range of different kinds of people in it and um I, I, i'm still at a loss to understand a lot of the objections to it really all right let's move on from jerry spring of the opera let me tell you it's coming yeah. to plymouth birmingham uh the uh, york grand leicester de montford hall glasgow aberdeen manchester oxford cambridge milton Keynes, edinburgh newcastle norwich bristol uh, bradford south end liverpool cardiff nottingham uh croydon and brighton and uh, it's a big tour january through until july and if you want to go and see it, call your local theatre. And as I say, I'm just so glad that these theatres did take it because I'm sure there'll be the uh, protesters who've got nothing better to do with their time than stand outside box offices telling people not to buy tickets. Well, we're really grateful to them. I mean, they've been really great. I mean, I know they've had a lot of hassle at different places, but there's also real excitement about it. And, um, you know, so it's, it's been great fun. Also in the stores at the moment is Stuart Lee's live DVD, which I watched earlier today. And uh, it was nice to see it, firstly, not in a theatre, in a comedy club, which yeah. gave it a nice feeling. And also, um, as I mentioned to you, before you came on air, you have a very distinct um, way of delivery. It's not 
over the top. It's not like ching at the ev- end of everything, and it's political and um, it gives you a comment. It was it was very different, and I enjoyed it for that reason. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, I did it in a, t- a, t- a little comedy club in Glasgow called Stand because um, I used to be in a double act called Lee and Herring, and we did a TV series in the mid nineties, and we did a video, and we shot it in a big theatre. And I just remember thinking it looked really cold, and I thought, well, if I ever do that again, I'll do it in a little room, and it's it's great because you can actually cut away to people in the room looking bored or confused or elated and you know you can hear the heckles and you can see me interacting mm. with people so it was really good I'm so thick I'm still trying to work out which one you are whether you're Lee or Herring it's I'm, I'm Lee yeah it's <laughs> taken me a while to work that one out uh, listen congratulations on Jerry Springer as I say I saw it at the Cambridge and it's coming to local theatres well listen Stuart congratulations on the DVD I've been uh, waiting for gas to come all day and oh have you <laughs> yeah, yeah, alright <laughs> right, mate yeah, so I've got a British gas leaflet that says you are in safe hands at the top alright have... just don't like a cigarette whatever you do no, I Stuart yeah. Lee congratulations on your DVD and on Jerry Springer the opera it's worth seeing just because it's one of those events that if you don't see you'll, you'll miss it and everybody else will talk about it uh, thanks for coming on the programme and sparing the time and good luck with your leak thanks a lot see ya ta-da mate bye the Alex Belfield In Conversation podcast with daisymedia.co.uk